Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use Paint in 3D to paint basic 3D objects in both the editor and at runtime. Let's begin by adding some basic objects into our scene. And let's open the main Paint in 3D window by clicking Window, Paint in 3D. You'll see here we have the option to lock the sphere. This is because the sphere is selected in our scene view or the hierarchy. We want to paint the cube, so let's select the cube and click Lock Cube. So you can lock any object that has a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. So once we've locked this, you'll see that there are two errors here. The first is a material error. This is telling us that this material applied to the cube is shared. If you notice all of these objects, like if I make a cylinder, this, these are all given this default material which is the uh, standard shader default material. So what this means is that if I paint the cube, it will apply the same paint modifications to every other default Unity object in my scene. And the same goes for prefabs. If I paint a prefab, it will paint every other prefab instance. If you don't want that to happen, then just click duplicate here. And now this cube has a completely unique material and painting this will not affect any other object. Next, the error is telling us that there is no texture in this texture slot. So in this material, we have selected main text and there is no main text. You can confirm this by going to the mesh renderer materials array and double click on element zero, which is the default material. You'll see that this has the standard shader and the standard shader has all of these settings. One thing you may notice is that the uh, standard shader does not have any texture called underscore main text. This is because this is the name of the texture in the shader, but Unity has an inspector name, which is different. So for the standard shader, the albedo texture is the same as the main text. This is just something you have to learn for all the shaders, for example, the unlit texture, the main text, which is the only texture, is actually called the base RGB. So let's go back to the standard shader. You just have to learn that main text means albedo. So let's use the default settings and click create, and you can confirm that the albedo texture is now a white texture. So it's uh, so if we go back to the scene view, underneath the mouse cursor, you can see we have a preview of what the paintbrush looks like. It's a white square, and to paint, you just have to left click and drag. However, if we do this, you'll notice nothing is being painted. This is because our paintbrush is set to paint white. You may notice that we're actually painting a gray cube here, but this is only gray because of the shading. The actual base color behind this is a white texture, as we can see here. So the reason why we can't see anything is because we're painting white on white. So let's change this from white to red. Now, if I click and drag, you'll see I can now paint red. One thing you'll notice is that I can paint on this side of the cube and it's applying the paint to this side, this side, and every other side. The reason why this happens is because the default Unity cube, which I'm painting on here, it shares the UV data on each side of the cube. So every six side has exactly the same UV data. If you don't want this to happen, then you can make a cube using six quads, or you can make your own cube in your favorite 3D modeling application and modify the UV data so every side has unique UV data. So let's try and do the same thing on the sphere, but instead of using the editor window here, because this isn't available in games, and we want to do the same thing, but in the game view. So let's begin by moving the camera slightly closer to our sphere. And let's say we want the same free flight camera controls we have in the scene view in the game. To do that, let's select the main camera, add component, and then add the P3D mouse look component. So this component uh, requires mouse zero, which is left click. So this will handle mouse look for our camera using left click. And then let's add the P3D camera move component. So if we hit play, 
you'll see we can left click and drag to mouse look. We can use WASND or arrow keys to move around. So to paint, let's select the main camera, add the P3D click to paint component. Let's make sure to change the brush color from white to, let's say blue. And because we want to paint the sphere, let's select it. And let's add the P3D paintable component. And inside this component, we need to add at least one texture we want to paint. So let's click the add texture button. And inside here, we have two very important settings, the material index. This matches the materials array here. You see element zero. This means index zero. We want to paint this material. So we want to paint element zero. So make sure you set material index zero here. And if you want to paint material one or the second one, then you set material index one. But we want to paint the first one, which is index zero. Next, you choose which texture name you want to paint. We want to paint main text, underscore main text. And if you don't know which textures are available to paint, then just open the paint in 3D window again, lock the object you want to paint, and then under the texture heading, you can view all of the available textures. And one thing you will remember when we painted the cube is that we had to duplicate the material to stop paint being applied to everything. And also we needed to create the albedo texture or the underscore main text texture. So to do that, we just need to enable the duplicate on awake setting. This will duplicate the material on awake, which means when this uh, game object becomes active, this texture will, uh, this material, a material index zero will be duplicated. And because we want to create the main text, we need to enable create on awake and we will use the same default settings. Now, if we hit play, we can move up to our sphere. And if we look at the click to paint script, you'll see it requires mouse one to paint, which is right click. And if I hit right click on this object, you'll see absolutely nothing is happening. The reason why this happens is because this click to paint component is used to paint using nearest recast. If you're familiar with recasting, you will know that recasting hits every collider in the scene. So our sphere has a sphere collider. Similarly, the cube has a box collider. These colliders are very good for physics, but they are not good for painting because they contain no UV data. So the UV data is very important because when you raycast on the object, the UV data tells you exactly which pixel you painted. And because the sphere collider does not have any UV data, there's no way to know where you actually painted. So what we can do here is remove this component. And now if I right click, you'll see I can paint on the sphere. One thing you may quickly notice is that if I paint slowly, the paint is connected. But if I paint quickly, there are lots of gaps in the paint. The reason why there are gaps is because this click to paint component is designed to paint once per frame. So what you're seeing the gaps here is one frame gaps between each paint operation. If you don't want this to happen, then instead of using click to paint, we will use the P3D click to paint substep components. And again, let's make sure we change the color. So this component is very similar to click to paint, except it will paint between all the gaps as well. So if I paint quickly, you'll see there are no longer any gaps between each frame. So even if you're running at low FPS, you will have completely connected painting. So let's say you don't want to paint boring squares. You want to have circles. So have a look at the brush shape setting. Here we can choose it accepts any texture shape. 2D. So using the alpha channel, it defines the shape of the brush. So here we can paint circles. You can change the size here instead of 1010. Let's change it to 2020. And there are also many other settings. I'm sure some of them are intuitive. Some of them may not be. So please experiment with what all the settings do. By the way, if you don't want to remove your colliders from your game objects, 
let's say you your game requires your sphere to have a sphere collider so let's add the sphere collider back so now if i paint nothing happens on my sphere so one way you can avoid this is to change the paint mode on the click to paint component instead of using nearest raycast we can use nearest this will ignore all of the colliders because it will not use ray casting so here if i click you'll see it now paints perfectly fine one downside to this is that because there's no ray cast happening if there is an object in front of your paintable object like if there is a wall in the way you will be able to paint through the wall onto your object one way to avoid this is to use mesh colliders that are not concave because those store uv data that paint in 3d can use if you require a concave mesh collider or a sphere collider or any other collider that does not have uv data then i recommend you put the collider on a child game object on a separate layer and change the paint components layer setting to ignore those layers uh, thanks for watching uh, enjoy making your games if you have any questions please post in the comments below thank you